In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, a hearty welcome to the Eucharist on this feast of Saint Justin, martyr. Uh, second century martyr. Uh, he was uh, leader uh, theologian uh, and somebody who searched the truth and found Jesus. Let's begin this Eucharistic sacrifice putting ourselves in God's presence and asking his forgiveness for our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you my brothers and sisters that I have grievously sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I've done what I failed to do through my fault through my fault through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who through the folly of the cross wondrously thought Saint Justin the martyr the surpassing knowledge of Jesus Christ grant us through his intercession that having rejected deception and error we may become steadfast in the faith through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever Amen a reading from the book of Tobit on Pentecost night, I, Tobit, washed myself, and I went out into my courtyard and fell asleep beside the courtyard wall, and my face was uncovered because of the heat. I did not know that there were sparrows on the wall above me, and their warm droppings fell into my eyes and brought on white films. I went to the physician to be healed, but the more they anointed me with their potions, the more my eyes were blinded by the white films, until I was completely blind. For four years, I had no use of my eyes. All my relatives grieved over me, and Ahikar took care of me for two years before he went to Elimias. And at that time, my wife Anna earned money at women's work, she used to send the products to their employers and they would pay her wages. On the seventh of distress, she cut off a woven piece and sent it to the employers and they paid her the whole price. 
and gave her a kid from the herd to take home. When she returned to me, the kid began to bleat. So I called her and said, Where did you get this goat? It is not stolen, is it? Return it to its owners, for we do not have the right to eat anything stolen. And she said to me, It was given to me as a gift in addition to my wage. But I did not believe her and kept telling her to return it to the owners. And I became flushed over this on her account. Then she replied to me, And where are your deeds of mercy? Where are your righteous deeds? Behold, these things are known about you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our responses. With a firm heart, the just man trusts in the Lord. Altogether, with a firm heart, the just man trusts in the Lord. Bless the man who fears the Lord, who takes great delight in his commandments. His descendants shall be powerful on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. With a firm heart, the just man trusts in the Lord. He has no fear of evil news. With a firm heart, he trusts in the Lord. With a steadfast heart, he will not fear. He will see the downfall of his foes. With a firm heart, the just man trusts in the Lord. Open-handed, he gives to the poor. His justice stands firm forever. His might shall be exalted in glory. With a firm heart, the just man trusts in the Lord. Kindly stand for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts, that we may know what is the hope to which he has called us. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, they sent to Jesus some of the Pharisees and some of the Herodians to trap them, trap him in his talk. And they came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are true and do not care about anyone's opinion. For you are not sway swayed by appearances, but truly teach the way of God. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay them or should we not? But knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, why put me to the test? Bring me a denarius and let me look at it. And they brought one. And he said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said to him, Caesar's. Jesus said to them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, the first reading is from the book of Tobit, Tobias. Now this is a book we yesterday, it was the Feast of Our Lady, so we had a special reading. Uh, this whole week we'll have a readings from Tobit, like the last week's book, Sirach or Ben Sirach. Uh, now that book is also uh, deutero-canonical. This is also, it's not in the Protestant Bibles, but it's in the Orthodox and Catholic Bibles. Just this week we hear about it. It's a story of Tobias, uh, a story of a family which did a lot of charity, uh, lived according to uh, the rules of Yahweh, a concern for the other. There's lots about 
praying, their angels come often in this book, and lots of the Catholic theology of angels also comes from this particular book. And here, once again, we have Tobit, he's blind. Uh, we'll, we'll hear a little bit about him in the next few days. But I want to go to the Gospel of Mark continues once again. Uh, they are trying to, uh, because Jesus gives us here great principles for us to reflect on. Uh, once again, they try to trap him. Uh, there was tax to be paid. The number of taxes, there was the tax about uh, which every Jewish person had to pay to the Romans. Then they had to pay the income tax, 1%. There was the land tax. They had to give 10% uh, of the farm produce, 5% of the wine produce, etc. And uh, this was a re resentment. They felt as a slavery. And they also were rebellions against the uh, Romans by the Jewish, uh, not to pay the tax. They think this is, they are like oppressing us. This was a symbol that they had rule. And Jesus, uh, knowing that they were not sincere in their question, if Jesus said, don't pay the taxes, uh, they, they would denounce him to the Romans and he would be, might have been arrested. If they pay the taxes, this is something very unpopular with law would indicate that uh, uh, he was subservient to the Romans, not backing his own people. So they were, uh, wanted him in trouble. So Jesus says, bring a coin. And uh, have you noticed, Jesus didn't have a coin himself. He was so poor, he didn't even have a coin to show them. He says, bring me a coin. And they brought the coin, the face of Caesar. And Jesus gives a principle over here, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, give to God what belongs to God. And what belongs to God? We are made in the image of God, so we belong to God. Our minds are made by God, we belong to God. There are certain, uh, Jesus here also, by saying give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, when you reflect, there's been so much of discussion about uh, the rights of the state, the rights of the individual, freedom, uh, what are the limits of the light of the state, rights of the state. This is something which has been developing even more and more and more. We have even now debates about that. Can the state, how free the question of objections of conscience. Uh, now, is it right? Is it wrong? What are my obligations? Uh, today, we are all in the pandemic. We need a state. Uh, imagine if you, there was no government, there was no, no one to coordinate the medical, uh, the giving of vaccines, the arrangement in the hospital. If everybody was able to do what he wanted, every individual, uh, there would be certainly it would be uh, chaos in the sense that we would not be able to be helped. There is necessity of organization, necessity of government, necessity of the state. Over the centuries, uh, philosophers beginning with Plato and Aristotle have thought about exactly which is the best government. And we've come to the conclusion today that democracy, because it's the best of the people, is the best government. But we see the limits of democracy also. Uh, because uh, you, you have government and then five years and then and you, you, certain things are good. Certain, no government is completely bad. No government is completely good. Uh, we've got that, that's always the reality. Uh, we, uh, ultimately, once we elect a government, we've got to be loyal to the government. We, that, that's, those are our leaders. Prime Minister Modi is our prime minister in India. We've got to be loyal to him, respect him, and obey the laws he makes, which are in keeping with the good of the people, in keeping with the law of God. Uh, so, sort of in that sense, uh, if it goes against the law of God, of course that takes priority. But you've got to reflect always there are certain, uh, so the, the one question is the, the necessity of government, necessity of organization, necessity of obedience, and necessity of paying taxes. Uh, we've got cheating of taxes certainly would be uh, wrong and unjust and, and uh, robbing society because they have so many services they do. But again, uh, there are limits to that. It's not everything. Now, who decides that is the problem? Is it uh, we vote and say this is right, this is wrong? We can't do that. Therefore, the continuous reflection in every circle, every philosophical, theological circle of what are the limits to the state's authority. Man has certain inalienable rights. To worship the God, the government cannot tell me that you must worship this God, not worship that God. That's, that's my own conscience. No? Because the government is something of our own creation. And we can, there's so certain rights we cannot give them. 
the parents have certain inalienable rights. You can't give them to the, the government, can't uh, limit them unreasonably. But some they can limit because parents could be unreasonable. So you see, it's, it's not something which is very, very clear. But maybe we begin with the position that government has rights, God has rights, and we're able, you and I, uh, are able to live comfortable lives, peaceful lives, and grow in holiness if we continuously keep in touch with Jesus and the Gospels and, and are able to decipher what should we do, how far should we go. Society, philosoph philosophers, theologians have come to right, the, the, the government of the people is the best. Uh, there is uh, certain countries, there is a king, but the king is a nominal king. Earlier the king was really a person who had authority. So you see there's always development in this and there will continue to be development in the next in the years to come right till the end of the world. But uh, let's reflect now, maybe today, on our own responsibilities also to society, especially at the time of the pandemic, especially the time of this, of COVID, vaccines, and the time for us now to be united and unitedly work together uh, with the government, obeying the, I've been repeating that, obeying the uh, COVID appropriate procedures, and also helping to be able to control this pandemic for the good of society. That's our moral obligation. Uh, I want to end by saying that a good Christian, good disciple of Jesus, is a very loyal citizen. And a loyal citizen really is one who serves society. God bless you. Today is the Feast of uh, Justin. I must tell you briefly that it's read. Justin was somebody who was in the, uh, I said, uh, born in the early second century. Um, a very reputed for his intellect and knowledge and searching of the truth. He was from Samaria, I think, and he exposed, he studied many uh, doctrines, etc., and, and met Jesus in the Middle Age. He was born of pagan parents, met Jesus, uh, and, the doc and then he chose Christianity. He had a band of followers, and uh, I think the emperor's name there was uh, Rusticus, uh, the one who was judging him. So he called him before him, uh, because, and he said, you've got to uh, now worship the emperor, he's the supreme god, and obey the laws of the, the princes. And uh, he says, I've searched the truth, Justin was known, I searched the truth, and I found the truth. And then, uh, and I know that I'm, uh, everything is because of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I found that the prophets had foretold him. I found, I'm convinced about this. But they asked him, uh, the Rusticus called him before himself, and he said, so you believe that if I beat you, etc., all this means that uh, you will go to heaven and be with Jesus. He says, uh, that's what you imagine. And uh, Justin replied to him, I'm not imagining. I know. I'm certain. So, so he says, okay, I'll, I'll beat you, etc. He says, uh, if I advise you uh, for your own good, because they respected him as an intellectual, for your own good, uh, now give this up and uh, worship the emperor, you'll be comfortable. And uh, Justin said, I would be foolish if after knowing the truth, I follow the falsehood. Uh, it, it's absolutely foolish. So if you uh, are insisting on that, I will undergo all the tortures you went. And so he was finally, he uh, said, this man doesn't obey us, is following the false god. That's what the Rusticus wrote. Therefore, go and behead him. And so all his followers were beheaded. A man who really uh, searched the truth and found the truth. May we also pray to Sir Justin to strengthen us in the faith, to, in our belief in Jesus, discipleship of Jesus. God bless you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness with this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness of this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, that we may celebrate worthily these mysteries which St. Justin strenuously defended through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right and just. Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyr, Justin, poured out like Christ's to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works by which in our weakness you perfect your power and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. So with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, Together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. We may also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Justin, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be quoted on a life, praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, to you, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray with confidence of the Father in the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory are yours now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, said your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. Over the sign of peace, Christ peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. To only say the word, my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment Thine. Lord Jesus, thank You for the blessings and graces You have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. Refreshed by heavenly food, we humbly implore you, O Lord, that attentive to the teaching of St. Justin, the martyr, we may abide at all times in thanksgiving for the gifts that we've received. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Master, and let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you for participating. Happy feast to all the Justins who are here. God bless you, and be like so Justin, firm in faith and uh, strong in the face of opposition. This evening we'll have a catechesis by our dear Bishop Agnello. God bless you, have a lovely day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Prayer for Relief from the Coronavirus Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants 
and in controlling the spread of the pandemic and be available to all. We pray for doctors, nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle, that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Trusting my Lord, He will never fail. He's a faithful friend, He's a faithful friend, such a faithful friend, such a faithful friend. I can count on Him, I can count on Him to the very end, to the very end. Though the storm clouds darken the sky, or the heavenly train. Trusting my Lord, He will never fail.